Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this lecture, we're going to talk about what every single man needs to know about women. How do women think and how are they different from men? So, point number one. Women need reassurance that they are always loved. Women always need to feel loved, appreciated, and cherished. The biggest problem here is that men take women's love for granted. Of course I know my wife loves me. I don't need to prove it to her. But see, the question is not whether she knows it or not. The question is, are you showing it? Are you demonstrating it? You see, men are very logical and rational. They reason, I'm providing for my wife, I'm paying her rent, I'm coming home to her at night, I'm taking care of the house. Of course, she must logically and rationally see that I love her. But women are not thinking things through in the same type of manner. They're feeling things in an emotional sense. So for example, if the husband is often silent, as most men are, if the husband does not talk about his problems, most men don't, if the husband withdraws into his cave, if the husband is busy at work, for many women, this is taken as a signal that he does not love her. Now we've talked about how to show love in other sections of this course, but briefly to reiterate, number one, verbal assurances, words of affirmation, I love you, never goes out of style in any language. It never loses its charm. It never loses that 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 gazaz that that comes with that phrase, and it needs to be said continuously. But it's not just uh, that phrase. It's positive reassurance. It's 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 affirmation. It's taking into account the good that she does. Number two, physical reassurance. Lots of touching, lots of hugging, lots of kissing, all non-sexual here. Remember, for women, it's the non-sexual hugging and kissing that makes them feel cherished and loved. Number three, companionship. For men, this is the most difficult because men do not open up for their problems and worries. But for a woman, this is what is the most important for them. So open up and show you're a genuine companion to her. Tell her your fears and worries and expect her to tell you hers. This is really what a woman uh, wants, that emotional connection with a man. Also realize that when she is emotional, don't just walk away into your cave. Just listen. You're the man. Try to keep your cool as much as possible. You want to handle your feelings alone. She wants to handle her, her feelings in your company. Realize, when a woman does become emotional, it's because she's trying to connect with you. When you become emotional, then generally speaking, as a man, you want to walk away from the scene of the, of the crime, if you like, or the scene of the, sore, of, the, of the tension. You want to go into your man cave. But for a woman, walking away at a time of argument is seen as if a rejection for her companionship. If you want to, you can tell her, honey, I need to calm down. Let me think things through. We'll talk about this in half an hour, in one hour. That's fine. You don't have to be there. But whatever you do, do not just turn your back and walk away. That's the worst thing you can do in an argument. If you cannot resolve it, right then and there, tell her when you will resolve it. And try your best to keep your cool because realize, for women, being emotional does not have the same connotation as it does for a man. For women, it's much more natural to be emotional, much more natural to be uh, uh, to be agitated and whatnot. For men, to be emotional and agitated really is asking for trouble. And therefore, do understand, take it in stride, and try to resolve any conflict uh, at the time or at a time that you set. In, in, in any case, the first point here, constant reassurance that she is loved. The second point, which is a follow-up of this point. Thought process. By this I mean, women think very differently than men. Now, most men believe that women are emotional creatures. Now, there might be some basic truth to that statement, but this is a cliched statement. But what does it mean that women are emotional? Well, one of the ways that this translates into is that a woman's thought process is different than a man. Generally speaking, a man focuses on one primary thought at one time. He solves it and he moves on. And unless he's in a really bad mood, generally he can ignore other issues. He can ignore other emotions and get his work done. 
he might be having a really bad argument with his wife. The next day at work, generally speaking, he'll do just as good of a job as he did yesterday and as he's going to do tomorrow. He can, we call it compartmentalize. He can take a problem and he can throw it into a compartment and he can just simply shove it aside and concentrate on another problem at one given time. For a woman, she is going through multiple thought processes at the same time. She is dealing with mundane issues. She is going over the household chores. She is dealing with emotional stress. For a guy, this simply is impossible to imagine. Let me put this in a, a real life example. Suppose you're working on a computer, simultaneously writing up a speech in one window, editing a schedule on Excel uh, in another, preparing a PowerPoint presentation for the masjid on the third, and also dealing with incoming viruses with an antivirus program, all the while people are emailing you. Can you imagine anybody doing this simultaneously? Obviously not. We do one thing, we move on to another, we move on to another. You need to understand, for women, they truly can multitask. Let me translate this into daily experience. I'll, t I'll tell you myself. And I don't mind, you know, taking the joke on myself here. Whenever I have to cook a, a dish, whenever I have to be in the kitchen, I need to literally go through a checklist, concentrate on one dish at a time, and make sure that it is going fine. If I decide to multitask, for example, check emails while the food is cooking, and take care of the kid, and prepare the dessert, and, and take for the bread, believe me, the meal is not going to be cooked. I just cannot do that. Yet my wife somehow miraculously every day simultaneously manages to do four or five or six tasks at a time. Managing the kids yelling and screaming, you know, making sure the house is done, do the chores, do the dishes, do all of the, 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 the stuff that needs to be done. A man needs to understand a woman is capable of doing multiple processes simultaneously. What does this translate into for a man and a woman? Well. For one thing, it's very easy for a woman to jump from one topic to another in her conversation. For the man, it's like, where did that go? It's completely stopped. Completely stopped because she's literally going from project A to project B and in her mind, it's working. For a man, this seems disoriented. For a man, he's not quite following along. And this is so frustrating for a man who has never been married before and then he gets married and then he finds his wife, he's talking about one thing and she might say something totally unrelated or the conversation will change from point A to point B and he doesn't understand why. She's not being disrespectful. This is the way that her thought processes are working. Also, this also leads to another issue which every single husband is familiar with. Women never forget anything done in the past no matter how many years or decades or centuries have passed, right? It's very common for a past item or a past mistake or a past issue to be brought up. For a man who is just thinking of a current problem or a current issue or a current argument, it doesn't make any sense that a past item is brought up. But for a woman, sometimes it's going to be brought up in two months, in two weeks, in two years, in 20 years. Whatever the issue is, again, it's something that is in her mind and therefore do realize this is rather natural for a woman that every man needs to realize that for a woman to bring up something in the past it's pretty common it is the way that their thought process works also this another fact which is very frustrating for men that women can be engaged in intimacy they can be in literally the husband is in the heat of the moment and their minds are on something totally different for example the chores for tomorrow, taking care of the kids, the bills, the groceries. And sometimes she happens to verbalize what she's thinking about when the husband is in the passion of the moment and there goes his romance. Well, again, this is a part and parcel of being a woman. It's very natural for a woman to multitask. She's thinking about all of these things together. And this is something women do need to realize. When their husbands are aroused, when their husbands are in the heat of the moment, when their husbands are turned on, there's only one thing on their minds, and that's sex. For her to bring up anything not related to sex is a big mood kill. It just destroys the entire moment. It really hurts the husband that he's involved with her. He's showing his love. Again, remember this languages of love. Remember for the husband, this is love. And then she brings up, oh honey, don't forget to, to take the garbage out You know, tomorrow morning. You know, And it's just so frustrating for the husband that he's in the middle of the moment, in the middle of this passion, and her mind is multitasking to something else. But again, this is something that men need to understand, that uh, women do not compartmentalize uh, their uh, thought processes. Men, on the other hand, do compartmentalize. 
So a man needs to understand that he will ne he should never assume how a woman thinks, never assume that her irritation is because of uh, you or because of anything until you verify it. The best thing you can do is to allow her to talk through her issues and to be a friend for her. Third point. Women need emotional security. We mentioned earlier that a man always feels the need to provide for his family, primarily financially. And alhamdulillah, that's a great and necessary thing. But what most men don't realize is that for women, they are more in need of emotional security than financial. What this translates into is that when the husband is working long hours in the office, he feels he's doing a really good job taking care of his wife, he's working his behind off to give her what she deserves. However, from her perspective, she is saying, my husband's rarely home. Perhaps, you know, he doesn't have that connection with me. Perhaps he's not as close to me as he should be. Perhaps he doesn't love me enough. Subhanallah. Many men, they tend to assume that just because uh, women like to shop, they are more materialistic than men. But the fact of the matter is that the average woman would value a strong and good emotional relationship with a poor husband over an insecure relationship with a rich husband. In one study, almost 90% of women surveyed said that they would prefer a man who took a lower paying job if he spent more time in the house. Think about that brothers. A woman, 90% of women said they would rather prefer a husband has a lower income, less money if he spends time at home. So the husband needs to work to develop that sense of security in a woman, the emotional security, just as he's got to work to ensure financial security. You have to work to ensure emotional security. Husbands, men, never assume that just because you're paying the bills and just because you have a big house and just because you're taking care of the financial needs and just because you're having sex with her at night that you are showing her emotional security. Emotional security is not dependent on these factors. How do you show her emotional security? By the small things. Keeping in touch regularly, texting her, calling her from the office, making time for her, quality time every evening or every week, spending some time with her, being an active part of your household, communicating, opening up to her. Even if you're working long hours, remind her that, honey, this is for you. You know, this is for, for the future of the children. Talk, talk, talk. And you know what? There is a compromise as well. Perhaps she does have a point. Perhaps you are spending too much time in the office. Realize that your, husband, your, your, your family, your wife, your children, they have a right over you as well, as do their finances. Try to find that middle balance. But the bottom line, emotional security. A woman needs to be reminded that she's loved, she's cherished, she's appreciated. And the fourth point. A man needs to know that what a woman really wants is a partner and a friend. For a woman, the ideal husband is her best friend. And for a man, that's not necessarily the case, is that he might have a best friend and his wife is not his best friend. That sometimes happens. For a man, he can love his wife to death, but she's not con considered her best friend. He needs to realize if he wants his wife to genuinely love him, she does need to become his best friend. For a woman, the ideal husband is a best friend. And what is a best friend? Well, a best friend is somebody who's going to listen with care, who's going to pay attention, who's going to sympathize. And really, uh, and we've been saying this from the very beginning, and this is uh, probably the most common point that is brought up in all books dealing with uh, the differences between men and women. And that is that women want to connect on an emotional level. Simple example of this, men and women talk for different reasons. When a man discusses a problem, he wants to speak as little as possible. He doesn't want somebody to listen for a long period of time. He wants somebody to solve the problem. He's not looking for sympathy. 
He's not looking for a, a shoulder to cry over. He's looking for solutions. He wants an answer. So he's going to go to somebody whom he looks up to for knowledge, for inspiration. He's going to say, you know, this happened to me. And they'll be silent. And he'll want a response. Well, you know what? You should do da, 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 da. That's exactly why he's speaking. Now, when a woman comes to her husband and she expresses a problem, he naturally goes into man mode, which means he talks as little as possible and he offers direct, explicit solutions to the problem. Well, you shouldn't have done that. You should do that. This is a mistake and this is your solution. This is not the way to deal with the issue. It's a big mistake. The impression you're giving her is that you're brushing aside her concerns. Next time you're in the company of two women, suppose your sister and wife, suppose your mother uh, and her friend, next time you're in the company of two women, just pay attention to what they talk about and how they communicate, how long they dwell on the same topic, how they seem to say the same things over and over and over again. For a man, it's very frustrating. But for a woman, they'll say the same thing and she will say it and she will say it and she will say it and a conversation will go which for a man would have taken two minutes, might last 20 minutes amongst women. For a guy, it's frustrating. But you know what? That's because you're thinking in male mode, in guy mode. For women, this is their language of communication. A woman wants somebody who will listen to her, sympathize with her, empathize with her. This is how a woman solves a problem. By talking about the issues with the people that she loves, by allowing her emotions to come out and to come out and to come out and to have those emotions recognized by those whom she loves, by her listeners. For women, it's not that the issue is bothering them. It's the emotions that the issue has generated. Men are different. Men don't talk about the emotions. Men they want to ignore that. It was embarrassing. It was No, they want to ignore that. They want to talk about the issues. For women, it's the emotions. I felt hurt. I felt uh, humiliated. I felt this is the point. And she wants the sympathy. Believe it or not, husbands, for many issues not offering a solution to your wife as she's discussing it through will actually make her feel that you're genuinely there for her. You're sympathizing with her. You're listening to her with the care and the attention and the sympathy that her problems deserve. And of course, this is where it does get complicated for men because frankly, and I'll be very honest here, men find it very difficult to listen to these types of conversations for that long. Something that they would say in two minutes, a woman might say in 10 or 20 minutes, and it's very frustrating. And that is why inherently, after two minutes, they just turn off. And this is a problem. So the TV is on, and the wife is going on about it, and on and on about a problem she's having, and the husband will pretend to pay attention. Uh-huh, yes, uh-huh. And, and assume that he's doing his job. I'm afraid that there's just no getting around it. Husbands, you're going to have to learn to listen. And I mean genuinely listen. That means turn off the television. Give her your full undivided attention. If you can't do it at that time, tell her, honey, I really need to finish this news. If we can talk over, about this over dinner at eight o'clock, whatever the time might be, that's the time we'll do it. And then honor your commitment. But you have to give her time. and. You have to simply sit there and listen. And another way is when she's finished talking, ask her, do you want me to uh, uh, give you a solution or do you want to think about it for a while? Because husbands genuinely are confused because husbands want to go into solve problem mode. They don't have empathize mode. They just want to solve the issue right then and there. And they don't realize for women, it might not even be that they want uh, the problem to be solved. They just want sympathy. They just want a shoulder to cry on. They just want an, a, a friend to understand what happened to them. And so they genuinely need to sit there and listen to their wives uh, uh, about the issues that happened to them. Another way is to understand that your job as a man is not to try to talk them out of your feelings. It's not to try to talk them out of the way they felt, but merely to sympathize with those feelings and to understand those feelings. Whatever you do, don't tell her she's overreacting. Don't tell her she's over-emotional. Don't ever tell her she's going through PMS. These are just big no-nos. You don't do that. Don't tell her that you, know, you shouldn't be feeling this way. Don't question her side of the story. Just listen. Try to see it from her perspective. And after she's done, then ask her, 
do you want to think of do you want me to help you think of a solution and always sympathize with her so for example if she was hurt just hug her hold her hand and say yeah that must have been very painful or how could she have done that just sympathize that's the first stage problem solving will come but the first thing you have to do is to be a friend to your wife and that's something that honestly men do find very difficult but if you want a genuine relationship with your wife you're going to have to learn to be friends with them to be companions with them to open up to be a genuine life partner the next point for women Sex is not about the physical pleasure, not at all. The primary motivation for sex is emotional. Men have a physical need for intimacy, and that's why they pursue it, and they go after it, and they initiate it. Women, on the other hand, don't have the physical urge as much as they have the emotional urge. And this is, of course, the general rule. I mean, frankly, let me be blunt here. The escort services, who's servicing whom? The pornography industry, who's servicing whom? It's women servicing men's desires. It's very rare to find the other way around. It's men who desire the physical. What do women want? Romance novels, right? The Hollywood movies about relationships. This is what women want. That's what their uh, stimulus is, uh, uh, is appealed by. And that's the point that we need to understand. For a woman, sex is about the emotional connection and not about the necessarily about the physical connection therefore men need to understand that if a woman doesn't feel like it or doesn't get as enthused about sex as you do or makes excuses to get out of it it's nothing to do with you and your performance don't take it personally and don't assume that your wife is any different from any other woman the problem comes and I've said this so many times before when a guy's in love he automatically wants to have sex with the woman he's in love with. For a woman, being in love means she wants to emotionally connect. And sex is a secondary thing. It's not the primary thing. And we mentioned in our class that a woman's arousal is not like a man's. When she says she's not in the mood, she really is not in the mood. She's not inventing an excuse. It's just that, you know, sexual pleasures are not on as high their list of priorities as it is on a man. A man needs sex, he needs intimacy to unwind and relax. A woman on the other hand, after a long day of work, after taking care of the kids, after yelling and screaming, really the last thing she wants to do is to have sex. That doesn't relax her as it relaxes men. She'd rather just curl up and go to sleep. She'd rather sit with a novel and, and drink some tea. And men need to understand it's a natural part of being a woman that sex does not relax the way that it relaxes in men. Sex is more about the emotional connection than it does about the physical. Now. This doesn't mean that men should now feel hopeless. One of the purposes of our class is to create the ambience, to make the woman aroused, to make her feel uh, sexual, and that's through the languages of love. A woman is aroused when she feels wanted, when she feels pursued, when she feels her husband notices her, vies for her attention, when it's obvious that she is desired. She is not aroused by visual stimulation. Believe me, if a man comes home and takes his clothes off in front of his wife, the wife will literally want to puke. Say, ew, that's disgusting. Whereas if the man comes home and the woman takes her clothes off, this is the man's dream come true, right? It's a wholly different attitude towards the physical element of sex. And by now, it should be very clear, and I'll say this as bluntly as possible, how you treat your wife in the kitchen will translate into how your wife treats you in the bedroom. It's as simple as that. The sixth point. Women want to feel beautiful by dressing up by the clothes that they wear, 
by the, the, the garments that they put on, by the perfume that they put on. And Allah Azza wa Jal Himself says in the Quran that الحليه, that He's talking about women and He goes that this, uh, the, the woman who is raised up in an environment of adorning herself, it's in the nature of women to accessorize. What does accessorize mean? Put on makeup, put on uh, earrings, put on jewelry. And the, when she does this, then husband or man you need to realize that she's doing this in order for you to notice her in order for you to show your attraction and appreciation it is one of the worst crimes you can do as a husband that when your wife changes her hairstyle you don't notice it when the wife dresses up you don't comment about it and by not noticing her accessorize by not noticing her dress up by not noticing her beautify herself, realize that you have killed any future attempt for, in order for her to beautify herself. Men, you need to take a mental notice when your wives dress up and when your wives change their appearance. And the flip side of this, never ever stare at another woman in your wife's presence. Of course, you shouldn't do this anytime. Allah Azza wa Jal has not allowed us to do this. But wallahi, brothers, even non-Muslims who don't believe in Allah realize how crude and how vulgar it is to stare at another woman right in front of your wife. You're destroying her self-confidence. You're destroying her love for you. Also realize that it's simply undignified. It's simply not going to get you anywhere to crack jokes about a second wife in front of her. I'm not making fun of the concept of a second wife. What I'm saying is, do you really think your wife is going to love you more? Do you really think that's going to make her appreciate you more if you casually throw in every second sentence a joke about a second wife? That's not the way to do it. And our Prophet ﷺ never once joked about another woman, even if he married one. He didn't crudely throw it as a, 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 a taunt every time something happened. That's not the way of a gentleman. You need to show your wife that, you, that she is the most important, the most beautiful object on earth. And that's not going to be done if you stare at other women. And the final point that I want to mention. Don't rationalize every single problem that a woman comes to you with. Remember, for a woman, it's emotional more than it is rational. One of the biggest differences between men and women is they want to think things through without any emotion. Just the cold, hard, bare facts. And that's not why the woman is coming to you. She's coming for empathy and sympathy. Don't view this as being any better or worse than you. It's just the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created her. And that's exactly what our Prophet some referenced. That, look, you cannot get a woman to think like a man. He said in that famous hadith that a woman was created from a rib and a rib is crooked and the most crooked part is the highest part now this is a long hadith about what this means but the bottom line is the Prophet is saying you cannot make a woman like a man if you try to do it you're gonna break her and breaking her means divorcing her you have to benefit from her as she is which means emotionally physically physiologically psychologically emotionally she is different from the man in conclusion Brothers and sisters, men and women, husbands and wives, realize وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى The man is not like the woman. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.